On the one side, you'll see from the left this idea that if you are gay, yeah. then you cannot be conservative. Or as you saw with Kanye West, if you're legitimately black or you care about black folks, then you can't actually be a fan of President Trump. You can't be an independent thinker in any way. What I do believe is that we can show them that actually if you really care about live and let live, if you really care about gay people or black people or Muslim people or the rest, the only way to do that is let people live free. Before Obama was in favor of same-sex marriage, I was in favor of the government getting out of the business of marriage, even though as a religious person, and you know this because we've discussed this, yeah. as a religious person, I still think homosexual activity is a sin, but who cares? We live in a free country. You can believe that I'm an idiot. For the years before gay marriage became law, uh, I believe that you were taking the, the libertarian position on this. Of yeah. just the government shouldn't be involved. Like since but but very yeah. few conservatives were doing Like Rand Paul, for example, should have been screaming about that. Yeah. Right? I don't care what he thinks about gay right. marriage one way or another, but he should have sta staked out that position and he could have led the conservatives to a right. more principled position. But what's your philosophy when you decide how to have a guest who do you think it's worth sitting across from? Because obviously not all ideas are created equally valuable. If you are literally calling for murdering people and all, I have no need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, my show, uh, as you know, my studio is in my home. There's right, some exactly. people I don't want in my home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb. If, they, yeah. if you don't want them in your home, then you probably shouldn't have them on your interview, right? I mean, that's- We've that's had true. that We've had that debate internally about some things. You yeah. Know? Like, uh, we, we have. Now, I wrote a column recently uh, about the reduction of the Overton window. The Overton window, for people who don't know, is this this, this term that was coined for acceptable elements of debate. So not people you agree with, but people who are saying things that are inside the realm of the of the rational or inside the realm of the reasonable or the, the decent, yeah. let's say. Uh, and what the left has done is they've closed that window so tight that unless you agree with them on virtually everything, you are now no longer in the Overton windows. Look, it needed to be bigger. There is no doubt about that. It needed to be brought in so we could have some honest conversations. If it shatters, if it truly shatters, well, then we're in this odd place where everything is equal and everything should be entertained, and that could be dangerous. So where are you yeah. religiously? Like, yeah. What is it that you believe? I, I would say this in terms of religion. I have a huge cultural identity to the history of the Jewish people. The, that's the confusion generally around Judaism, whether it's a culture. I identify with the culture. Right. Um, so, I, so no, I don't like the word atheism related to what I believe. I don't know that I can fully tell you what I believe. I, I just don't. And I know some people will say, oh, that's some sort of cop out here or something. But I, I have a belief in something. I would say I'm far more of a Zionist than I am religious, easily. Give me the one thing that the right needs to do and then give me the one thing that the left needs to do if we want to have a country in five years. So the left, look, what they've needed to do is exactly what I was trying to get them to do was please rein in your most extreme forces. Unfortunately, they're simply unable to do it because of the oppression Olympics, because of how identity politics works, and because of grouping people based on immutable characteristics in a constant competition. They have the idea that intersectionality makes them stronger, like it's going to be like, you know, a couple Decepticons forming Devastator, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be a bigger, <laughs> better robot. But that's not how it works. It becomes a bigger, crippled monster. And what the right can do, I, and I think you can be a big part of this, there is such an opening for you guys right now where all of the same people that have just had it with this nonsense are going to start pushing you away. I think you've done a really nice job of sitting down with these people. And I think the more that that can take root in conservatism, the, the agree to disagree, which I think is, is pretty much happening. But the more that that truly takes root where you guys go, you know, we're going to be we're going to have to be OK with the idea of pro-choice. We don't have to put it in our party platform that's, or, or whatever, but like we're going to have to find some allies that believe some different stuff as us. And the more that you guys do that, I think you will, find, you will have incredible, uh, an, an incredible ability to build something new. And that would be something that I would be proud to be part of. And I, at this point, I think you're going to find it very easy to do, actually. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. The Ben Shapiro Show Sunday Special is produced by Jonathan Hay. Executive producer Jeremy Boring. Associate producers Mathis Glover and Austin Stevens. Edited by Alex Zingaro. Audio is mixed by Mike Caromina. Hair and makeup is by Jesua Alvera. And title credits by Cynthia Angulo. The Ben Shapiro Show Sunday Special is a Daily Wire Forward Publishing production. Copyright Forward Publishing 2018.